Hello friends, welcome to my video. Today I'm going to talk about indexers in C-Sharp. It's one of the most important concepts. We'll see what indexers are and how to create and use it in a program. So before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way you will be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. What is indexers in C-Sharp? Indexers enable object to be indexed in a similar manner to arrays. What does it mean? Let's suppose we have int array obj int array where we have five elements into it and if you want to fetch the data from obj int array let's say for the second position from the array we write obj int array as square bracket one right so it gives the second element from the array based on the position because array index start with zero so similar type of flexibility if you want any user defined object to be indexed so we use indexes so if you see the syntax of indexes, we write access modifier, return type, this parameter list, and then get and set access output, right? If you see the examples here, first the indexer declaration, public a string, this int, int type, and a student ID is one of the parameters that we are passing to this indexer, right? And here we are just going to write the get and set access output, right? Indexers is just like properties, except that their accesses are take parameters. If you see the syntax of uh, indexers it is accepting parameter list right but if you see the properties index we don't have you know parameter list we just write access modifier return type property name get and set right and if you see the example first we define a private field over there and then we are defining this properties right public a string a student email get and set so if you see the syntax indexers and properties both are almost same but only exception is that that indexer accesses take the parameters right and also we are using the this operator in this indexer whereas properties is not taking any parameter and also it is not using any this operator anywhere so that's the way how we are going to write indexers right because we want the objects to be indexed in a similar manner to arrays that's why we go to write the indexers, right? Indexers demonstration in C sharp. Here I wrote one simple program to show you how to create indexer and how to use it, right? So let's see this example. Here we have class student where we have three attributes a student ID, a student name, a student email. A student ID is of the in data type, a student name, a string data type, a student email also a string data type, right? And we have another class a student info where we have list a student a student list and in the constructor a student info i have used object initializer to populate the data into this a student list so i have written a student list is equal to new list a student and then new student a student id one a student name ravi a student email ravi dot ravi at the rate email dot com second a student new a student a student id is equal to two a student name is equal to raz a student email is equal to raz at the rate email.com and so on so i have inserted five a student into this student list right and here if you see the syntax public string this int a student id right so this is i have declared this indexer right public string this int a student id where we are passing parameter a student id of the in data type right and return type is a string and access modifier is nothing but here public right and we have this get and set accessors right so if you see this get what i am doing i am taking as a parameter a student id right and here i am just taking a student list dot first or default and then s such that s dot student id is equal to a student id dot a student email so what this statement is doing it is iterating uh, a student list and finding a student id based on the student id that we are passing from this parameter right and it if it is matches then it is taking the student email of that particular student id right and then it is returning and in set what we are doing here again we are right iterating this student list uh, and then if the student id matches then we are setting whatever the student email that we are you know setting from the another program via this index so this is the set accessor and this is the get accessor right and if you see this program class where we have this main method which is an entry point of this program right 
here i have created instance of a student info that's what i have written a student info is a student info is equal to new student info right and here what we are doing here a student info square bracket one because i have given this one and one is nothing but what a student id so a student info we have passed a student id is equal to one to the indexes so it will go and get a statement will be getting executed because we are just you know fetching those things i mean the get accessor will be coming into the picture when we are writing a student info one right so here a student id is equal to one so it just i treat this student list if it is matches with that then it is just going to pick that student email of that particular student id so here a student info one we have passed so a student id is equal to one here a student email is equal to ravi at the rate email dot com right so that's what it got you know this email and is stored into this string variable and then we are printing those things into this console window right a student info and then email so that's what you are able to see this output over here a student info one and that is nothing but the ravi at the rate email dot com right because this email that we have received via this accessing indexes right and we got the student email id right and here in this case ravi at the rate email dot com that's what it got printed into this output right so this is the way how we are going to declare and we need to write get and set accessor right whatever the parameter that we have you know received based on that if you want to perform some logic then we need to write those logic in get and set then we are going to access a student info one so this is the get if you want to set those values then similarly a student one and then equal to and then we will have to give this uh, email id right so whatever the value that we are going to pass that is going to set via this set accessor right so right now but here i have just used this get accessor over here right and we have written a student info and that's what we are able to see this output into this output window right so let's see this example into visual studio in action so here we are on visual studio so uh, this is the same program that we have discussed just now so here we have a class a student where we have three attribute a student id a student name a student email there is another class a student info where we have this list student a student list and in this student info constructor i have populated this a student list with the help of object initializer right so i have given five a student and inserted into this a student list a student id is equal to one a student name ravi a student email is equal to ravi at the rate email dot com and so on right and here we have written this indexer declaration what we have written over here public string this int student so this indexes will be taking a student id of in data type and return type is a string and uh, this operator we have used so that it will be working as a indexer right and here we have this get and set accessor so get accessor what we are doing we are just iterating this student lead with the help of lambda expression where it matches a student id and then it is just fetching this student email and the set again the same thing it is finding with the student id and the setting the value of the student email with the value implicitly type right whatever the student email that we are setting from the program that's what it is going to call this indexers and call this set accessors and that's what this student email will be getting set for this student list right and here we have this main method of the program class which is an entry point of this program so here i have just written you know con console dot write line to uh, write those things into this console window that i'm just giving the demo of the indexer demonstration in c sharp right and this is the student info where we have created this instance of a student info class and then in this console dot write line i'm just you know calling this indexer a student info one where one is nothing but the student id that we are passing right of the indexers so it is just going to call this get accessors and it is just going to retrieve me this student email and that's what we have we are printing into this here into this console window okay let's just start this program execute this program and see the output i just click the start button so this build started build succeeded 
Okay, so output got appeared into this console window. If you see the first line indexer demonstration in C sharp, that was the statement I wrote at the first statement to write onto into this console window, and that's what it got. Here we are receiving this email ID Ravi at the rate email of one dot right because we have passed one as in a student ID to this indexer and this a student ID one is associated with this email right and that's what this email got you know fetched on the indexer of the get accessors and then that's what we received those things and printed into this console window and that's what you are able to see into this console window overloading of indexes in C sharp so overloading of indexes in C sharp is just similar to the method overloading okay nothing else if you see here here we have defined two indexes. The first indexer accepts a student ID which is of in data type, and the second indexer accepts a student name which is of a string data type. So parameter list, I mean the input parameter are different in these two indexes. That's what it is getting overloaded, right? In the first indexer, we are iterating this student list. If it is matches with the student ID, then returning a student email. And similarly, we are setting a student email, right? Here in the second indexer, we are iterating a student list, but instead of a student ID, it matches a student name. And then it is just fetching a student email and then returning, right? The set again, it is identifying the particular record if it is matches with the student name, and then it is setting this student email with the help of value implicit variable, right? So in this main method, we are calling these two indexer one by one. So in the second statement over here, console write line email ID as student info one. So it is calling the first indexers and receiving this as student email, right? In the second call where we are doing a student info Ravi, here we are passing value of the string type, right? So it is calling this indexer, right? And if it is matches this student name, then it fetching the student email. So here, if you see the output, both places email ID is going to paste, right? And the first, it, it faced with the help of a student ID, but in the second, it faced with the student name. But email ID associated with the same imply. Either we are fetching from the student ID or we are fetching with the student name, but we are fetching an email ID only. And that's what it got printed into this output window, right? Okay, let's see in this visual studio so here we are on visual studio so i have extended this program where i have written another index here i have given this input parameter which is of the string data type and then we are passing a student name right so if you see there are two indexes the first accepts int student id the second indexer accepts a string a student name but in both indexer, it just return a student email only and the setting the value of a student to email only. So either we are passing a student ID or a student name, it is iterating a student list and matches whether it's matches with the student ID in this indexer or it matches with the student name in this in indexer, but it is just sending the student email, right? So here in this main method, I have called first indexer with this a student info one where we are passing in data type right and a student info ravi here we are passing the string data type right so it is calling this one this is the first indexer it is called the second one it is calling the second indexer okay so if you notice i am passing a student info one so if you see a student info one one is nothing but the student id that we are passing so a student id one and its email id is ravi at the rate email.com right here in the second statement i have passed a student info ravi if you see this list a student name ravi it is also associated with ravi at the rate email.com so either we are going to fetch with the help of a student id is equal to one or a student name is equal to Ravi, it is just going to give me this a student email Ravi at the rate email.com, right? And we will be using these two indexes to fetch those values. Okay. Let me execute this program. Okay, if you see this output got appeared into this console window. So email ID 
both email id is just depicting ravi at the rate email.com ravi at the rate email right because we are returning from the indexer the email id only whether we are going to call from the first indexer or the second indexer that mean if we are going to call the first indexer where we are passing the student id i mean the integer data type value that we are providing okay and the second indexer we are passing name ravi which is of the string data type that we are passing so it is calling to the second indexer of the get accessor and that's what this email id is getting retrieved from that so that's what whether we are going to call either one or two indexer it is just retrieving this email id and getting printed into this console window indexers in interface indexers can be declared on an interface accessors of interface indexers differ from the accessors of the class indexers in the following ways interface accessors do not use modifiers an interface accessor typically does not have a body so if you see the example over here we have one interface i some interface over here right so if you see the indexer declaration i have just written a string this int index get and set if you notice there is a no body right we have just written get and set but if any class is going to implement this interface they will have to give the proper implementation of this indexer important points about indexers in c sharp so here we will be discussing about some important points related to indexers in c sharp so the first point is indexers enable objects to be indexed in a similar manner to arrays so whenever we want objects to be indexed like arrays then we can use indexer right a get accessor returns a value a set accessor assigns a value this keyword is used to define the index right the value keyword is used to define the value being assigned by the set accessor so whatever the value that we are trying to set it is going to use this value implicit keyword right to assign those things so that's what this statement is saying okay so indexers do not have to be indexed by an integer value it is up to us how to define the specific lookup mechanism right so because indexer is a member of our class or a structure or other object that where we are going to define this index right so it is up to us which lookup mechanism that we are going to use whether it is going to fetch by the int value or it it is fetched by the string value or it is the character value yeah whatever the you know lookup mechanism that we want to implement we could implement we are free to do that right because indexes we are creating in our own class itself or structure itself right so we are free to do that that's what this is it is saying it is up to us how to define the specific lookup mechanism right indexer can be overloaded right so we have already seen that indexes can have more than one formal parameter for example when accessing a two dimensional array so whenever we have two dimensional array where we need two input parameter right so that it will be fetching one particular cell value in this array two dimensional array right that's what it is saying indexes can have more than one formal parameter right okay so with this it brings me to end of my session to sum up in this video we saw what indexes are how to create and use it in a program with example next we learned how to overload the indexes and then we saw how to declare indexer in an interface and finally we discuss the important points related to indexers in csa right that's all for today if you like this video hit the like button share it with your friends and colleagues subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already thanks for watching see you next video